So I'm here with Eric. He's one of my best friends and I've known him since back in school. And as long as I've known him, he's always been a stick kind of guy. But over the last year or so, that's gone 180. And I'm here to talk to him about, you know, what actually made that change. What was your philosophy behind the whole thing? So I was getting married and my at the time fiance wanted me to include more vegetables in my diet because I thought I was eating healthy, although it was a completely meat dominant diet. And this is more than a year ago, a year and a couple of months ago, where we sat down to watch a couple of documentaries. Now, this was totally a hit or miss in her, for her. There was a commercial one called What the Health, and then there was, which I wasn't completely 100% sold on. And then the second one was Forks Over Knives. 50% into that documentary while eating a burger, the very taste of that burger changed. And that, and so the documentary wasn't about animals. It was about us, our health, our wellness. They were talking about symptoms that I was seeing in my own life and I was 30 years old. And a switch flipped in my head and that was it. But it's not just been um, a change in uh, the way you eat. It's been a lifestyle change for you as well. I always exercise. I tried, I've got borderline obesity in my family. So I've never wanted to go into that direction. So I've always tried to stay in shape, exercised, doing a whole bunch of crazy things. Um, that's what my wife would term it. And her mom. And my mom and everybody. Okay, anyways. Um, but it kind of changing the way I ate changed a bunch of things on its own. The way I would sleep changed. The kind of sleep I get changed. The, the way I'd wake up, how I would feel. At this point, I can eat till I'm full and I wouldn't go into a food coma or roll around because the food that you end up eating is still a lot lighter because it's not just no meat. There's no meat, there's no dairy, there's no cream. So in essence, a lot of the food is a lot lighter. It's, it was difficult initially, but like I said, once that switch flipped in my head, like I don't crave meat. I didn't crave meat one month into it. It was difficult only from the standpoint of me getting used to eating things I never even considered food before. The, the difficulty started in first what to eat because I started having to read every single thing that I would buy. You go to the store now and I'd say 90% of the supermarket has got milk in it. Mm -hmm. And it'll be in some form or the other. You'll find salt crackers which have got skimmed milk in it. Or you'd find a bag of chips which is just supposed to be salt potato chips but it's got milk in it. And you just wonder like why is milk in all this kind of food? So that was difficult. Me getting used to actually saying, okay, this is what I can eat, this is what I cannot eat. And then obviously having to move to different stores just to find food, because this was all very new to me. Psychologically, it was borderline depressing for the first few months. Not because, hey, I can't eat this kind of food, I couldn't eat that, whatever. That kind of went away in the first week. Uh, but because I would exercise and I would lift weight, I lost a lot of weight. I basically shrunk. Everything, I dropped clothes sizes. I dropped like, I don't know, I probably lost about 17 or 18 kilos over the course of three months. Not doing anything different except just changing the way I ate. And that also affected my muscle growth. So it went from being able to deadlift a massive amount of weight to not even being able to pick up half of that. And that was borderline depressing. Because for me, I was like, okay, I'm doing all of this to make myself feel better, but now I'm feeling crappy because, hey, you know, I worked so hard to do that and now I can't do any of it. But yeah, so it's, it does take a toll on you and it's something you have to be prepared for. So you spoke a little bit about labels um, a little while ago. Um, what is it exactly that you look for when you look at labels to make your decisions in terms of, you know, what's really good for you? If you don't know what it means, don't buy it. Mm -hmm. Simplest thing. If it's got some massive scientific name, don't buy it. If the expiry date of, of a product is six months and you know that if 
you got it from the raw source and you kept it on the counter for a week, it would go bad. Don't buy it. So make small changes. I 100% will not say I'm not perfect with this. I do eat preserved foods. I eat chips. I eat crackers and stuff like that. But try to minimize it. So even if you're going and buying like fresh juice, in this one and a half year, I've realized that there are like 50 ways a brand can disguise the word sugar. They will say it is sugar less and it's got a whole bunch of other nonsense where if you looked up the meaning, it is basically sugar. So there's a common conception or other misconception that people have that um, being vegan or vegetarian means that you need to spend a shitload of money. Um, you need to only eat salads and fruits. So if you need to go out and buy some good meat for steak, it's going to cost you for a quarter kilo of good steak meat. It costs you quite a bit. Same thing, if you buy, go and buy good chicken and not just frozen chicken, it costs you. So it's kind of just substituting one type of food over the other. I guess the only difference is you're not used to seeing a price tag on something which is non-meat to be that high. Of course, um, variety is a big deal. It, it is difficult. You have to go from one place to another. Stores are also changing. So it's become it's becoming easier because I guess they are becoming a little bit more in the know of, hey, this is what people are preferring. So it don't get intimidated. It's if you do the mathematics behind your grocery bills, like my grocery bills never changed. It's just that what I put in my grocery trolley changed. So on that note, um, what's cooking for dinner this week? What's cooking this week? <laughs> um, we just got back from the groceries. No, I don't like cauliflower. Crap. Okay, so apparently cauliflower, there's uh, broccoli, which I've grown to like, which is very strange. I'm still anti-cauliflower, but anyways. Uh, there's chickpeas, there's beans. There's definitely going to be some kind of Indian dal, lentil or something in that. Whole bunch of fruit. So there are apples, there's grapes. There's, well, you've got two types of grapes as well. There are berries, orange, and there's nuts. And of course, I've got my indulgences. There is some kind of chips or crackers, but I limit that. So, yeah. Throw everything together and let's see what happens. Although my wife is an amazing cook. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs>